Hello everyone, welcome to The Voice of Nursing. My name is Adrian Tracy, I'm the CEO of ICG. Today we are very lucky to be joined by Linda Perry. Linda, welcome to The Voice of Nursing. Good morning. Linda, talk us through how you got into nursing. Well, when I was at school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to work with children and I looked at a number of different jobs, being a speech and language therapist, went up to Moorfield and looked at um, some job testing eyes, which um, really didn't appeal to me. And so I decided to go into nursing um, and did a children's and adults course, which was probably one of the best things I ever did, and carried on from there. And what was, the, what was your first role then? So you did, was it a diploma, was it or a degree? No, no, I'm um, of a few years of age and so it was before they did all those things. So I did a special um, integrated course where I did adults and children's nursing but there weren't degrees, diplomas or anything like that around um, many years ago when the dinosaurs were walking around. Uh, so you did your, your, your course and then what were you doing, were you then on site or were you in a medical ward or what, talk us through the journey about where you start and start getting some, you know, that hands-on experience. So I worked at um, Queen Mary's at Carl Shorten, which was a children's hospital. Been around for many, many years. Unfortunately, is now a housing estate. Um, and we looked after all different sorts of children with, from infectious diseases, different surgery. We had um, a neonatal ward. And then because I did an integrated course, which means I did children and adults, I worked at St. Helier's at Rose Hill, where I worked on all different sorts of wards, wards from casualty to theatres to medical, surgical, out in the community, all different sorts of things. Um, but I would have to say that doing both qualifications was one of the best things I ever did. Why was that? Because it's opened so many doors for me. I think when people go into nursing, they often think it's going to be in a ward, um, looking after people maybe having surgery or have become their symptoms have exacerbated and they've become acutely unwell but actually it is so much more and those are the areas that I've worked in and really, really enjoyed. And then talk us through, you know, you're at Car Shulton St Helia, what, what, where did you go after that in your career? Were you there for a while? Was it, you know, a year or two? Yeah, um, after we did our qualifications, we stayed for six months and I worked on um, the neonatal surgery ward, looking after children with lots of abnormalities um, and really enjoyed it, but then I got married. So we, I moved down and did burns and plastic surgery for about 11 years, um, particularly focusing on children um, and in looking after them with acute burns um, and also doing things, um, looking after children who've maybe been bitten by dogs and um, had their arms removed and gunshot wounds, all different sorts of things, but looking at particularly at um, maxillofacial surgery, um, but a lot of burns work, which I really, really enjoyed. And where was that? That was at Queen Victoria in East Grinstead, which is still um, still there now. It certainly is. Yeah. And then where did you move on from that? It's been quite a varied career. Yes, um, when I had my children, I took on a job as a Saturday morning girl at the unit locally for epilepsy, which had a school and college, had at the time about 300 children there um, and young people who had various different forms of epilepsy and associated disorders, and I worked in the medical centre there. And that was probably when I first realised that there were many different roles in nursing that weren't maybe ward-based and um, started just doing things that have been so exciting and really different. Um, so I started off as a Saturday morning girl, used to look after the children who were having prolonged seizures and got involved with management, worked my way up and um, some of the really exciting things I did, I actually worked for my MBA and was successful with that, um, which actually gave me quite a few management skills to move um, the unit on and make sure that we were meeting current requirements. I got involved with research and we developed, um, I was involved with a team who were developing um, buccal midazolam, which I don't know if you know about that, but it's a treatment for prolonged seizures. Um, and prior to that, people used to have medication um, given rectally, which obviously isn't really that socially acceptable and is quite difficult to administer. 
um, and that was a really exciting piece of work that was done there by a researcher um, and I was lucky enough to present the, some of the data we had in America at a conference so what was that? Um, that was around the buckle medazolam and around well, what how was the conference or what was the it was the um, American Epilepsy Society okay. meeting so a big meeting out in America that's held annually um, and it actually has transformed the treatment, the emergency treatment of epilepsy, which I think is really, really significant and something I'm really proud of. Um, but also working there gave me lots of opportunities and we started to uh, develop um, links with Great Ormond Street um, and we developed an assessment service so we'd take children from all over the country would come and have an assessment of their epilepsy and that would be looking at all the different aspects of epilepsy so not only their medication um, having monitoring done but also looking at the behavioral issues psychological issues speech and language therapy all the therapists would be involved um, and it was quite a unique service we set up but I think also that's when my interest of providing services to people in their own homes started. Um, often people are looked after in centres or at schools and colleges, but it's actually the parents who have to look after these children for 24-7 every day. Um, and it's quite a difficult task. And so what we set up with the assessment service was an outreach service where we'd send a nurse to their own home to their local school and help them to actually integrate back into their local community um, with providing support and help to do that. And that's where my real interest of actually looking after people with complex health needs in their own home probably started from. And, and you went to work for Great Ormond Street then? In that? I looked after the professors and the senior lecturers and the doctors from Great Ormond Street during that period. Um, they worked in both locations, mainly focusing down in the epilepsy centre, but obviously still have their connections and their clinics up at Great Ormond Street. So yes, I was looking after professors, researchers, um, neurophysiologists, all different sorts of people. It was quite exciting. Um, and also, we obviously had big contracts with Great Ormond Street, so I had to manage those. So lots of different skills that maybe when you first start out in nursing and you're going on a ward and looking after some patients you don't really think you're going to be doing but um, I seem to do it. Um, one day I found myself in a lecture theatre having to give a lecture to 500 people who um, were all experts in the field and um, being really really nervous I started talking and then I suddenly found that also I had a lot of skills at speaking in doing public speaking which was um, to sit there to start talking and then for everybody to go quiet and for them all to be listening on every word you said um, is a bit of a thrill. And, and what happened after that then? What was your next step in your career? Um, so I was there for 21 years and then I decided that I would probably have to um, do something different as I'd done it for a long, long time um, and my children were beginning to go off to university and do other things. So um, I got a job managing a children's hospice, um, which was a completely different area of work, um, looking after very similar children, but um, obviously with the added um, difficulties of the children who were dying, um, talking with families, and also with a charity that had to raise money. So it brought lots of different skills out of me, some skills that I didn't even know I had, although, in hindsight, when I read the job description, I just knew it could have been written for me. Um, and it was a really exciting job. But I used to manage the whole site. So I would manage maintenance men, gardeners, kitchens, um, lots of different things, which probably when I started nursing, I never thought I'd be doing. Um, and whilst there were moments of sadness, um, it was a real privilege to be involved with those families looking after those children. Um, but also get, you got to meet lots of celebrities, which is awfully good fun. Um, one of my particular favourites was David Walliams, who was just absolutely fabulous with the children. He came and read some of his stories to the children and he was just so lovely. Um, and I can remember there was a young lady who was had only a few days left um, and he made a special visit to see her um, with his dog. Um, the dog was in the bed with her. I'm not sure whether that was allowed, but um, 
it just absolutely made her day um, and it was beautiful to see and be part of. Um, and I think my, the experiences I had with the hospice will be with me forever. And it, wh who's the charity? What's the charity was, called so we can give yeah, them a, a It was called Chestnut Tree House. It was the children's hospice for Sussex. Um, and um, lots of wonderful work, lots of wonderful people there. But most importantly, lots of wonderful children with great families um, who did some amazing things. And um, we also provided services once again in children's own homes to help the families, support them through sometimes very difficult times. Um, and also would look after the families after their ch children had died, because often lots of services stop once the child's died. Um, and we had wonderful therapists who would help. We had a great play therapist who would work with the siblings of the children and provide support. Um, yes, it was a fabulous place to work. We, one of the things that we're always interested in when we're doing this is we always think about nurses. Where did you learn the skills or how did you learn the skills to, to manage the families? So that's almost as, you know, just as important as, as helping the patient. But where do, where do nurses learn those softer skills, you know, or where have you seen those sort of softer skills picked up? Um, that's a really good question. I, to be honest, don't know where it comes from. Um, and some people can do it and some people can't. I think, um, for me, uh, one of the things I heard, I heard on the radio once, um, a lady, uh, Carol Vorderman, was talking about doing the Pride of Britain Awards. And somebody asked her why she, how she managed not to get upset or to cry. And she said, it's actually all about the children or the person who's done something really brave or really good. And she said, it's not about me. And I always remember that. So that if something was happening and I was beginning to choke up or feel upset, I think actually, do you know what? This isn't about me. Um, and managed to find the right words. Um, and often there aren't right words but there also aren't wrong words, and sometimes it's just about saying something um, to support the family and allowing them to talk and, um, and also just making sure that the deaths that people have, you know, nobody, people aren't in pain, making sure the symptoms are managed really well, um, and really just giving people time to talk and explain how they're feeling. Um, and I think you, Working in an environment like that, you pick up lots of tools and keywords to say. Um, but I think basically it's about nothing's wrong and that actually um, it's about giving people space to talk and grieve and um, express how they're feeling. And children are just absolutely amazing. They can be really, really ill. And often they'll know what's going on and their parents will think they don't, but they often know that they have maybe only a few days left. Um, but they'll be more interested in getting their fingernails painted or um, having something nice for tea. Um, and that's what it's all about. And uh, you talked about that, you know, obviously that's a you know, pressurised environment. You know, and mental health is, is becoming a bigger issue in general life, but you know, even more so maybe in the nursing community. You sometimes see a lot of the either the memes or the jokes about nurses never having a break. It's not funny, but it, you know they're the things that happen. It's almost like a badge of honour sometimes for nurses. What what are your thoughts on, on sort of the mental health situation with the nursing community at the moment? I think that a lot of nurses do find it quite difficult, and I do think that sometimes nurses can be a bit heroic about oh I'm not I haven't had a chance to take a break. Um, but if you're not working 100% then you're probably not providing the best care that you could. So for me, I do think breaks are important and I do think having the opportunity to talk to people and that can be professionals for some and for some people it's maybe just your husband who is a really good listener and who you can doesn't have an opinion on what's happened but maybe can just support you if you talk to them. Um, I also had some really good nursing colleagues, some of them who I have known since I started my nursing career and it's really good sometimes just to have a chat about how things are and how difficult things can be. Um, and I've always worked, I've not always required any special care but I've always had a good circle of people around me who I can talk to um, and I think 
some of these jobs aren't for everybody and they aren't necessarily for everybody on the long term and maybe sometimes you can do them for a while and then maybe you need to look at doing something different. Um, and I think that's one of the things I often think about my career is that sometimes I think if you stay somewhere a long time you don't necessarily know what you can do next and so it's about trying something new and um, for me when I went into nursing I never thought I would be doing all these different things that I've done. Um, I've worked, I was a trustee for the Neurological Alliance, looking at lots of different neurological charities. Um, I worked with NICE, developing the guidelines for epilepsy. I've done lots of different things that I really never ever thought that I would do in a million years. And um, it's exciting and I feel really proud of what I've achieved. It's interesting the different elements of nurses, they seem to have this varied career. Whereas I think a lot of people have that, you know, this idea of a nurse in a uniform in a ward. Yes. And you never realise the, the breadth and that seems to be getting bigger and bigger each, you know, each week, each year of what the responsibilities nurses are taking on. Yes, and I was talking to somebody yesterday who comes, who works for NHS England and she was saying that a lot of people who work from, with her are actually nurses um, who are now doing um, different jobs looking at how to improve the patient experience. There's lots of different jobs around and um, obviously working in a ward is really important, um, but there are lots of different things to do. And I think the more different things you do, the more you learn. Um, and I was in a meeting only yesterday and I learned something even as old as I am. So I think you can all learn all the time um, and if you're helping the patient experience then that's what nursing is all about. And, and from your perspective you know having a, a varied career what, what do you sort of see the future of nursing are the top three things to be looking at? I think nursing is changing I think I remember when I started nursing people who were on ventilators were in hospital for their whole of their life if they required a ventilator whereas now they're at home um, I think hospitals are becoming very much very acute. People don't stay in them too long, so you, you're in there when you're not well. Um, I think the whole country has got to sort out when people go to hospital um, and maybe support people in their health more with an emphasis on keeping them out of hospital rather than going in. So more on wellness. Yes, uh, yeah, okay. yes, and making sure that people manage their own conditions as much as they can. Um, and I think over, certainly since I've been nursing, the change to providing more services in people's own homes and pe with people in their own community um, has increased hundreds of times. And I think that's the way forward will be that people will be looked after in their homes more and will only attend hospital when they really need to. And why do you think that is? Is it the cost obviously of being in hospital is significantly higher? I don't and think also it's, a recovery as well? I don't think it's more, I think it's more about recovery. I think people do much better when they're at home. There's less infections around. Um, they, people do tend to do well, but it's just about making sure that they get the appropriate care in their own home. That's what makes the difference. Mm -hmm. Uh, and take us up to up to today then. Tell us what you're covering now, what your, your role is now. So at the moment I'm developing complex care at home for green staff. So looking at um, getting registered with the CQC, recruiting lots of really high quality nurses who can cope with really complex people, both adults and children, with really complex health needs who are looked after in their own home. Um, looking at making sure that staff are there to help the families and talking to families who have to look after somebody with really complex health needs. What they struggle with often is if staff let them down um, and that can potentially lead to visits to hospital which means that they have um, unnecessary visits to hospital and being in hospital isn't always the ne necessarily the best thing for their health um, and also families having burnout if they have to keep looking after their children um, who require 24-7 care so I've looked after children who maybe are on a ventilator are completely dependent on that ventilator 
but because they are small and don't necessarily know what they're doing, they can turn the ventilator off, flick out their tubes, and so you literally have to have your eyes on these children all the time. And whilst obviously families want to look after their own children, they do need support to be able to do that. And even if maybe just one shift is missed, that can mean a parent doesn't get sleep at night, leading to them maybe themselves becoming unwell, having health needs themselves. So for me, I think what's really important is that a consistent approach of staff who can provide a package of care in people's own homes is going to be key going forward, and that's what we're going to be doing. Superb. And looking back on it now, when you, you know, giving, if you met yourself as a younger when you were going into nursing, is there any advice you would have given yourself thinking back on it? I think I'd say I should have been more confident at the beginning and to actually embrace all new opportunities and um, you just never know what you can do. Superb. And what message, Linda, would you like to give our nurses that are watching this? Any nurse who's watching this, I think if you are in the career, well done, you've chosen a really good avenue. If you're thinking about doing nursing, I think you just need to remember there's so many opportunities and it's the best thing I ever did. Linda, thank you very much. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you for everyone watching The Voice of Nursing. Thank you to all our nurses, doctors, uh, allied health professionals and carers. Uh, we look forward to catching up with you again soon.